military vehicle models from a Ukrainian veteran and craftsman, an environmentally friendly 3D printing home mini factory, a history of a family that has gone through the difficulties of the Ukrainian Liberation War. UATV continues the series of programs about those who have successfully returned to a peaceful life. At 11 o'clock of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, a truce between the Allied countries of the Entente and Kaiser Germany entered into force. Ten years later, this date was turned into a national holiday in the United States of America, first in honor of the truce, later in memory of all Americans who took part in wars and armed conflicts. For over half a century, November 11th has been called Veterans Day. It is an officially day off, parades are held in the streets, masses are held in churches, and flags are lowered to half-mast. Until recently, veterans of just one war, the Second World War, both of the Red Army of the Soviet Union and the Ukrainian Insurgent Army, who fought on several fronts, were honored. However, the annexation of Crimea by Russia and its concealed invasion of the east of Ukraine have given a new reason to honor those who defend the country here and now. In August 2014, President Poroshenko announced that modern Ukrainian soldiers must have their own special day. In 2015, the Day of Defender of Ukraine was celebrated in the country for the first time on October 14th. This day is marked by two significant holidays at once. The intercession of the Most Holy Theotokos among Orthodox Christians and the Day of the Ukrainian Cossacks. October 14th is a day off in Ukraine, although the tradition of celebrating this day has not yet been officially established. Discussions about whether all men should be congratulated on this day or only those who took part in the defense of Ukraine against Russian aggression are ongoing. One craftsman in Kyiv definitely knows what gift to present to the true defenders of Ukraine on their special day. We are developing models of military vehicles, creating the models and then printing them on a 3D printer. Then they go through post-processing, painting. Volodymyr Velikozhan is a participant in the hostilities in the east of Ukraine, so he knows well what military vehicles look like in the field, rather than in a parade. His wife Victoria represents the home department of their family workshop. We recently decided to start making lamps. We really wanted to do that since the very beginning, but it just wasn't possible at the time. But now that we have bought a large second printer, we can afford to make lamps of different sizes. How did the family of a soldier survive in difficult times for Ukraine? What should one take into account when 3D printing miniature objects? What distinguishes the products of the Velikozhan couple from others? Everything about the fascinating veteran business watch further in this program. The Day of Defender of Ukraine had a predecessor, which people don't really like to remember. For 23 years after the country became independent, we continued celebrating the Soviet Defender of the Motherland Day. This day has exactly the same roots as the U.S. Veterans Day, but is actually artificial. It was believed that on February 23, 1918, the Red Army detachments won their first victories in Pskov and Narva against the regular forces of Kaiser Germany. In 1922, that day was made a holiday, although historians know well that on February 23, the Bolshevik troops actually retreated from the Germans, surrendering both Narva and Pskov. But since the Soviet dictator Josef Stalin later wrote in his memoirs about the great victories of that day, the myth was firmly established for decades. It was inherited by modern-day Russia and now they celebrate a holiday called Day of the Military Glory of Russia, Defender of the Motherland Day, on February 23rd. A quarter century ago, it had been an official red calendar day for Volodymyr Velikozhan. By age, he ended up in the last conscription of the army of the Soviet Union. From 1991 to 1993, it just so happened that I was to serve in Moscow. I was offered a good job in Moscow with an attractive salary, but I had no desire to stay there at all. I didn't like the atmosphere of the city. Soon after demobilization, he met his future wife Victoria. Since then, they have lived happily together for the past 25 years. We met at the Kyiv Institute of Design, where we were attending design courses in 1993. We worked together on the radio, first at one station and then at another one. We're together all the time, both at work and at home. 
Since the beginning of the 2000s, Volodymyr and Victoria ended up in the same advertising agency, which, among other things, made various props and decor for stores, presentations and so on. Volodymyr, a chief design engineer by education, had already mastered computer modeling. I was a marketing director at that company. I was fully responsible for all sales and our annual revenues were a million dollars. We sold our products to the countries of the near abroad – Russia, Moldova, Azerbaijan and Belarus. The events of the Revolution of Dignity against the country's sudden turn from Europe to Russia took everyone by surprise, but the couple never doubted for a moment whether to help the protesters or not. We went there and helped with whatever we could, be it food products and sometimes medicine. It was quite frightening. I was scared to witness everything that was happening. Although people on the Maidan believed in the movement and hoped for something new. Instead, Russia launched a hybrid war and deprived Ukraine of a part of its territory. Volodymyr couldn't stand that anymore and joined one of the mobilization waves when people with military specialization were being recruited into the Ukrainian army. In the Soviet army, he served as an artillery man. I told them I worked with 3D graphics. They immediately appointed me as commander of a self-propelled artillery control unit. That's a person who can read maps and knows how to determine their location without GPS, rather by using landmarks. In short, I ended up offering my know-how and serving in a self-propelled division. I often cried because I was scared for my husband and I was worried about the child, because it wasn't easy for him either. I attended several sessions for consultation of a military psychologist, and that really helped me. My task was to orient guns and terrain. In the summer of 2015, we spent a month and a half living in the fields, and we relocated every night, since the situation there was quite unstable. At first, you think there is a recon group behind every bush, and you keep thinking, what if there is a booby trap on your way as you are running across the field? But then you get used to that. Volodymyr returned home safely. But the senior management eliminated his position in the company. Thinking what he would do next, he soon came up with the idea of making miniature models of Ukrainian military vehicles as toy souvenirs. Instead of going on vacation, Volodymyr and Victoria bought their first 3D printer. How it's made 3D printing, or additive technologies, have been known since the 1980s, but only became widely available on the world market in the first decade of the 21st century. 3D printers are today as user-friendly as possible for inexperienced users, but that does not mean that any person without training can print something right away. Volodymyr knew how to design 3D models, but he had no idea how to work with this high-tech machine. After demobilization, he went to study how it works. I had a good friend who worked as a manager at an academy. I gave him a call and he offered me to teach 3D printing to children. I said I couldn't do anything myself, as I had just bought a printer two weeks prior to that. He responded that I would learn myself how to work with it and then I would be able to teach children. The sense of responsibility before his class helped Volodymyr master the subject faster. Demand also appeared. Initially, Volodymyr downloaded finished blueprints from the Internet and printed them, but he was not satisfied with that and moved forward. I didn't like them at all, because they were not as detailed as I wanted them to be. So I just took one model, cut it into parts, added some elements, removed other details, and then added some magnets to them. The end result of his mastery was a miniature infantry fighting vehicle IFV, that could be assembled without the use of special glue, unlike those of all other manufacturers. Major errors in size happen. Sometimes you print the same part and it fits, but sometimes it gets stuck. Different temperatures and different raw material batches and many other factors have an impact on the end product. But magnets allow to get around this problem as they will, one way or another, bring the parts together. 
There were also difficulties with raw materials. Usual plastic turned out to be excessively toxic in home workshop conditions. So as a solution to this problem, Volodymyr found special environmentally friendly plastic produced in Ukraine to use in the process of making his miniature military vehicles. It is made from corn, sugarcane and potatoes. It does not give off any harmful substances in the manufacturing process. If it's lost or thrown out, it will utilize itself. That is, after some time, it will crumble into pieces and turn into fertilizer. Volodymyr and Victoria still use polyethylene in separate cases when particularly durable things are needed, as well as a mixture of bronze and plastic in the ratio of 80 to 20 percent. But for most miniature models, the organic material is enough. Ukrainian veterans and their families quickly found out about the designer and started ordering military vehicles models with realistic decor as gifts in their combat form instead of parade and with the number of a real military unit. They often had to work with photos and recreate the tiniest details. In such projects, Volodymyr uses a molten plastic nozzle with a diameter of just 0.2 millimeters. I finalize the models, I paint them and apply everything that needs to be applied. We have an agreement that I just print them and give them to Victoria, and she polishes and primes them. Sometimes everything needs to be primed and polished, and she does it better. Victoria is also responsible for constructive criticism of the resulting models, and Volodymyr often had to redo some parts. That is especially true when it comes to the largest project among the miniatures, the AA gun. The designer spent dozens of hours working on it. I had an idea that it should be able to turn left and right around its axis, that it will also rotate vertically. I didn't intend to do that initially, but when I assembled it, it turned out that keeping the barrel in place is very difficult, and then I decided to add some gears. So I did this. You rotate the handle, and it goes up. The AA gun took me several months, because I had a crisis. I didn't know how to do some things, but then I continued working on it. I wasn't satisfied with the result. Our AA gun isn't finished yet. There must also be a man in a Scottish kilt standing on the barrel. It is a personal gift for a friend, so Volodymyr and Victoria will continue working on it for as long as their perfectionism requires. However, Victoria was never too happy with her husband's fascination with military vehicles. I didn't want to paint them when Volodymyr posted them on social media. I didn't really want to post all those military vehicles. That's true, yes. I wanted to make something beautiful, colorful, bright, interesting, alive, so it would be pleasant to the eye. Thus, the first bionic-style home lamp project appeared. Victoria and Volodymyr attempted to convey an imprint of living nature in these simple geometric shapes, as if the lampshade grew over the lamp. They also used magnetic mounts here, so the internal part is easy to remove to wipe off dust or replace them. The Velikojan couple plans to launch a whole line of such modular lamps. We plan that this lamp will be one in a set with all its features, including one outer and two inner canopies. Then people who buy these lamps from us can order new inner canopies. We will keep the design roughly the same and optimize the canopies, so they would all fit into a small box. That is important for convenient delivery, since Volodymyr and Victoria expect that their bionic lamps will interest people from all around the world. The emphasis is not on the fact that it's made by a veteran who needs help, rather that it's really cool and he really does it better than others. The point of every activity is to not just do it well, but do it better than everyone else. The unit in which Volodymyr Velikojan served took part in the parade on the Independence Day of Ukraine in 2018. On the Day of Defender of Ukraine, the couple wishes one another and the country that wars would be exclusively toy-like. But until then, people like Volodymyr will always be ready to fight for their native land for real.